How do you know if mycosis fungoides will be aggressive or not? What signs do you look for? Having LCT, is it always a bad outcome? That's a tough one. Dr. Lekowitz, do you want to start or I can? So, yeah, I'll, I guess I'll start. So some of the, um, so we do have as, and just as everyone know, in terms of the cutaneous T cell lymphoma being a part of the um, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma um, family. I think when people um, at least come to, come to see me for a, um, an opinion, um, I, that's one of the concerns uh, is that they're often told that they've got lymphoma and that they're they're left to sort of think about all the different types of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma there is. Um, in terms of, um, I think one, there's a lot of questions within those three questions, so I'm going to try to attempt at a couple of them. I think one of the one of the questions is how um, how do you know or how how can we tell um, who's whose disease may or may not um, get better or what are some concerns. I think, you know, we know that there's the more extensive disease, so stage 2B and past, but I think the other things, at least, that we often look for um, are related to, um, and I'm interested in Dr. Dr. Cheney's experience as well, is that the difference between kind of patches or plaques, so they start to look more nodular. There are things under the microscope, as we know, that give us a sense, are there larger cells? Are there some cells with different um, characteristics to them that make us concerned that they could be uh, multiplying faster? And Dr. Cheney brought up a little bit earlier when we were talking about early stage or stage 1A disease being less than 10% of your skin, if you start to see um, there are some people that will come into my office and I'm sure other many other people's offices and it's almost as if a switch has been hit and then they'll have a number of lesions kind of coming up at the same time throughout throughout their body. That or any kind of change in staging or, or change in um, approach uh, to something you're used to, I think is, um, is, is something you need to talk to the, your dermatologist or your physician about. Other times we see things like, and at least what I talk to everybody about is, um, and I see people that have more um, systemic lymphoma, so unintended, unintended weight loss, night sweats, um, something that, you know, glands that, that seem to be not go away, and or again, anything that starts to look raised or more nodular or more like a tumor or even more like an ulcer um, or something that frankly doesn't seem the same as it was before. Those are the, those are the places that um, that those are the types of changes that I get concerned about. We're still, with that in mind, we are still, there's many different things that we're looking at across the, you know, in this field itself about trying to understand uh, who presents with um, localized disease and then goes on to have more aggressive disease as opposed to those that um, have localized disease for decades. Um, and we are still, as a group, working at, working on a number of those different things. And uh, Dr. Cheney, if you have had things to add. Uh, sure. So I agree with all of that. So things that I worry about being signs of progression of disease would, again, be if you're developing very extensive skin disease. You know, if you've gone from having three spots on your skin and then all of a sudden you're covered, that's fairly unusual, but that would be something to definitely get checked. If your skin lesions are getting thicker, developing into tumors, and if you're noticing ulcerations happen in your skin or on your lesions, especially when you haven't bumped or hurt them, if all of a sudden they're scabbing and crusting and opening up, that's something that definitely needs to be checked. If you're getting red and scaly all over your body, and if your itch is getting much worse, that needs to be checked. And then, like Dr. Leckwitz said, swollen lymph nodes, weight loss, fatigue, where you have no energy, those are all things that need to be looked at. Uh, I believe there was one question on, is all LCT, which is large cell transformation, which is a change we see under the microscope, is that bad? Um, so the traditional thinking is that large cell transformation shows that your cancer is more aggressive. I think it depends a little bit on what we see with your 
our eyes to in addition to what we see in the biopsy. If that was a biopsy of just a scaly flat area on your skin, that may not signal that it's a poor prognosis. But if that is a big ulcerated tumor, then we're more concerned about that. And then if I could take that a step further that, right, or if for some reason it's noted within some people will, as we talk about lymph nodes, um, if you see that within the within the lymph nodes itself, that has a very different connotation to if than from a skin biopsy. So um, we do have quite a number of um, debates would be a strong word, but conversations with regard to large cell transformation. And I think that for um, it's, a, it's an incredibly um, it's an incredibly anxiety provoking thing for the for the patients when they're looking when they're looking up their disease and they're seeing their pathology and what it means. And I would just stress um, to make sure that you're talking with your provider with regard to the context of what it means for your own individual disease, um, because there are different forms of large cell transformation. What are the initial signs and symptoms of progression of MF? Yeah, so I'll jump in since Dr. Pacheco has been doing a lot of talking. <clears throat> Usually we see that, that people will present with a, a pruritic rash um, that sometimes can mimic eczema or dermatitis. And, and many people have a several year history of a pruritic or itchy rash before they get a diagnosis. And um, so, you know, the, 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 there are different sort of phenotypes or flavors of how this presents, uh, but usually the, the rash will present as an itchy rash on a, what we call a, um, a sunbathing suit distribution. Um, so non unexposed skin areas is where the rash usually presents. And so usually we'll see people like Dr. Pacheco was saying early stage disease where there's skin only involvement. We do, we do always assess for all the, the different compartments that can be involved in cutaneous T cell lymphoma, um, which are the skin, lymph nodes, uh, blood involvement, and organ or, or visceral involvement. So we always want to check these places, but the vast majority of patients present with skin only disease. So most of the time we can get people into a remission, like Dr. Pacheco was saying, with just skin directed therapies, classically phototherapy. But when people progress, usually it manifests in the same way that, that it had initially with a progression of their pruritic rash uh, that we either call patches or plaques. Uh, there are some scenarios where, where individuals in addition to skin, a skin progression can progress in other places, but that is the minority, the vast majority of people present just with skin only involvement and progress with skin only involvement. And usually when people pr progress on, on things like phototherapy, for example, or light therapy uh, with skin only involvement, that might be a scenario where we think about adding some other drug that would help to get them back into a remission or get their, their disease back under control. Although people are different, what is generally the time frame for progression to advanced stages when st starting at stage 1A? Thanks, Autumn. I can take that question. I guess the first uh, implication of that question is that the individual who asked it is in assuming that someone who has stage 1A will go on to develop progressive disease. But in fact, that is not the case for all patients. Um, many patients with stage 1A disease, about 85% of them do not go on to experience any disease progression. Of that small percentage of patients that do go on to develop disease progression, no timeline as to when that is expected to occur. And it's certainly, unfortunately, no great biomarkers to figure out who is at risk of developing disease progression. And even though disease progression sounds quite scary, oftentimes that just means bumping up to a slightly higher grade of disease. And that can be as simple as getting more than 10% of your body surface area affected if you have stage 1A disease. Doesn't automatically mean that you progress to the most advanced stages. 